School Live. We are going to be meeting with a really cool animal family and introducing you guys to some of our new additions in just a moment with Keeper Kelsey. But before we do, I wanted to give a huge thank you to everyone who has tuned in uh, every single week. This is our 12th week running of Zoo School Live. And uh, as much as you guys appreciate it and have reached out and told us how much you enjoy watching and commenting and getting our feedback, we also have really enjoyed it. Our whole mission here at the zoo is to educate and to build empathy and connection. So this has been a way to do that with you guys through this strange times of the pandemic. So we are very excited to hopefully open up soon and see you guys in person. Um, but until then, if you're still interested in watching some live segments, we will have a new segment coming up in July, Camp Keeper Live. And we'll be introducing you to some of our aspects of how we care for our animals, similar to how we've done Zoo School. And then we will have one final kind of extra special Zoo School Live episode coming up on June 21st. So make sure you tune into our Facebook and uh, check for updates because we'll continue to be a presence here. And with that, I'm going to turn it over for our very last Zoo School to Keeper Kelsey. Hi everyone, my name is Kelsey. You've probably seen me a few times. So we're going to zoom in on to one of our little wood rats who some of you probably met before. He recently actually had a birthday party. His name is Thistle. Oh, he's going to come over here probably and get some food. Um, Thistle, oh, he's at the top. <laughs> Thistle is four years old and he just had his birthday April 15th. And he is super adorable and super busy because he actually just got his breakfast. But there's a few others that I think you guys will really, really enjoy meeting. Um, he is actually a dad now, just in time for Father's Day. Um, so we're going to go inside and we're actually going to go meet his kid. So this is our jewel case. If you've been to the zoo before, you probably usually see it flipped around the other direction. Um, and this used to have our favorite toads in it. They've actually left. They went to a different zoo. Um, you can never see them. It just looks like an empty cake full of dirt. So we actually decided to retrofit it. And now we have our little rat family in here. So there's actually three rats in here. Um, and we get to tell you their names. So this is actually a baby rat in the back here. He is eating a little piece of hay. And that's Bramble, one of the winning names from our name contest. We are pretty sure he is a boy. We can't be 100% sure just yet because um, he's still a little bit young. And then our other two rats, we actually have mom and a little girl in here who is shoved behind mom. <laughs> so mom is actually sitting in their little cave down here. And that's Pollen. So a lot of you haven't actually met Pollen yet. Um, she typically lives off exhibit. And her daughter, who is probably squished just behind her, is Juniper, which is our other winning name. Um, both Pollen and Thistle are estimated to be about four years old. So they're not too, too old yet. They're still fairly young. In captivity, they can live to roughly six-ish years old on average. Um, but the oldest rat ever recorded in captivity uh, was a nine-and-a-half-year-old white-throated wood rat. Um, I do not know what zoo that, that rat lived in, but that's pretty old for one of these guys. Um, and I didn't actually feed them yet because I was hoping they'd come out, so I can actually show you their food real quick before we put it in. So this is the diet for these guys. They actually have a really good mix. So these are rodent block. It's um, made just for rodents. It has a lot of the minerals and the vitamins that they need. They also get some rabbit chow, which is just for your domestic rabbits at home. Um, and that's also for some added vitamins and minerals. And then they get some fresh veggies. They don't always get the same thing every day, but they also have sunflower seeds. And these little guys wiggling around in here are meant to be in here. These are mealworms. Um, these guys actually really, really like mealworms. It's like a little protein snack for them. Um, sometimes Juniper comes out because she likes to take all the food and put it in a different place, a different container, if you will. They're also getting greens. I believe, and I could be absolutely wrong, that this is green leaf lettuce. Um, they also get dandelions, they get red leaf lettuce, romaine. Um, sometimes if we have weird types of lettuce, they'll also get that. Um, so they have a bunch of different things they get to eat. And in the wild, these guys do eat a hugely varied diet as well. So they eat seeds, nuts, fruits, berries. If they can find it, they'll eat bugs, they'll eat some small lizards if they can ever catch them. 
Um, and they also eat cactuses. I know that seems like a really weird thing to eat, but these guys actually love prickly pear cactus. So sometimes they actually will make their home right at the base of a prickly pear cactus. And that way they live where they eat, which I think is pretty cool for these guys. I'd love to live in my own food. Um, and they actually make a really huge nest called a midden. They make that out of vegetation, grasses, sticks, anything that they can find really, which you will notice in here, they have a lot of different things. Um, they'll move all of this, I just cleaned. They're gonna take all of these loose sticks down. They'll take these little cotton pads down and they're gonna put everything down in their nest and they just pile it up really big. One of the biggest middens ever recorded in the wild was four feet tall and eight feet wide. That is huge. These little rats are only about a foot long total, including their tail. So that is a huge, huge house for such a tiny little rat. Um, and they also tunnel underground. So you probably noticed Thistle's exhibits look like a little den. So those guys actually will dig a few inches down in the ground underneath their midden and they'll have a few little tunnels in there where they have food storage and they keep a little nest. Um, they actually really do like to line their nests with soft material. So that's why we kind of offer them those little cotton pads that they're gonna rip apart and fluff down on their nest. Which you can see underneath little bramble back there. He has actually made himself a little bit, a little nest over there, um, which has the cotton pads in there. He took some other types of bedding and shredded those as well. And then he kind of packed it down and he made himself a little comfy nest back there. It is hard to see the other two with their little nest in the corner, but they did the same thing. So they have a bunch of the cotton pads down there that they shredded. They also get a bunch of other things. So I brought a couple things so you can see what else we'll give them because some of it got shredded and we don't always give it all at the same time. Um, but we will give them fur. So this is actually bison fur from our bison girls here at the zoo. We freeze it to make sure there's no parasites or anything on it first. And then we can give it to these guys and they actually love to line their nest with fur. Um, this is just the cotton pads before I rip them apart. So they come in these little pre-cut pieces that we'll shred up and then give to them. This is tissue paper. So any type of newspaper, tissue paper, these guys love to shred. That's what the little orange bits in uh, Bramble's Nest actually are. And then this is an egg crate. And you can see they do have an egg crate in there with them. And after a little while, they will chew the edges of these and they tear them apart and also use those as nesting material. You'll notice we also give them a lot of boxes. That's so that these guys can have places to hide. So in the wild, these are a prey species, which means they're not hunting other things. They typically get hunted. And there are a lot of animals that live in the same place as them that actually really like to eat these little guys. So they get hunted by birds of prey, coyotes, foxes. I know we had a zoo school about the ocelot. He actually lives in the same area as these guys as well. And sometimes he'll also eat little white-throated wood rats. So these guys have to be really, really careful when they're out and about in the world looking for food or looking for other wood rats. And they do that in a couple ways. So they have really, really big eyes, if any of them will look at you today. Um, and those eyes actually help them see super, super well in the dark. So these guys are mainly nocturnal. So they'll use those big eyes to look out for danger while they're out foraging at night. And they can also see okay in their tunnels when they're looking for their nest or their food or they're digging new tunnels. They also have really big ears. The baby's ears are a little bit smaller than their, their moms. Um, they haven't finished growing all the way yet. They're still kind of in their little teenager stage. So their ears will get a little bit bigger, but they will use those ears to hear really, really well, but they also use them for heat regulation. So these guys live in the desert and it gets very, very hot up there. And when you're a little tiny animal, you have to make sure that you stay cool. You overheat very, very easily. So to help themselves keep cool, these guys have those big ears with lots of blood vessels in them. And they'll, when they're hot, more blood goes through their ears and it cools it off before going back to their body. Um, being nocturnal and living underground during the day, during the hottest time, also really helps these guys maintain a cooler temperature during the day when it gets super, super hot. And talking about deserts, I'm sure you're probably wondering where exactly they live. These guys are actually native to the U.S. They live in the southwestern portion of the United States and also in the northwestern portion of Mexico. So these guys could potentially be found if you ever go out to California. 
Although, like I said, they are nocturnal, so they'll probably be sleeping in their giant middens. <laughs> so I guess look out for a giant pile of sticks. You might find a little rat. Um, so these guys do live in a bunch of different environments as well. So mainly desert areas. So more arid areas that don't have a lot of rainfall each year. But other than that, they kind of live wherever. They'll live in shrubland, they'll live in light forests, they live in the desert itself, they'll live um, out in grasslands, and they also like rocky areas. So any of those areas are good for them. They actually have a couple favorites. They really seem to prefer rocky areas and shrubland. Um, some research has suggested that these rats actually don't like dense forests. Um, if the, forest, the tree cover is too much, they don't actually like to live there. That's possibly because it doesn't let some of their favorite foods grow very well in the low light. Because um, a lot of the plants they like to eat are desert plants, so they need a lot of light to survive. Like prickly pear cactus, um, which you can sometimes find here. We have actually given them prickly pear cactus, which they really, really love. Um, they don't, you, have to, you don't have to worry about the little thorns with them. They'll actually move them so that they don't get stabbed. Um, they just like to eat the whole pad itself. And they actually get a lot of water out of that too. So since they do live in these very arid areas, you might wonder, how do they drink water? Because they probably don't have standing water around them. And in the wild, they don't. So usually they get most of their water from the plants that they're eating. And they're also very good at conserving water just in their own body. So they don't waste a lot of water. They're not gonna um, sweat everywhere and drip all their precious water out. So these guys will eat lots of cactuses and green plants to help them drink water. And I'm sure you might be wondering, how long are they pregnant for? So little pollen here was actually pregnant for just 42 days. So she only had babies inside <laughs> for 42 days before giving birth. Um, and now these babies are actually 56 days old. So I know that seems very, very young, but for a little rodent who doesn't live a super, super long time, that's actually, they're almost done growing. So when little Bramble back here in the corner is about 100 days old, he'll be full grown and it'll be time for him to leave mom. So we're probably gonna keep him here and he'll have to live in a separate house because these guys would potentially breed with their mother if left in with her. Um, so he will be separated eventually and we're hoping that little Juniper, who I think is, oh, she's sleeping <laughs> very cutely. Um, she'll probably stay in here with her mom Hopefully for a while, we're going to see if they get along with each other. Um, but generally in the wild, they live alone, so we'll have to wait and see what they end up wanting to do. Um, Pollen did actually come out for us. She is actually up on that wall above Bramble. She's just hanging out. Sorry. Trying to see if little Juniper wants to come out and maybe get some seeds from us. Um, she usually really likes to have snacks, but sometimes she's sleepy right now, so I tried to set up some food for these guys so they move, um, move around for us. So her favorite snacks are actually sunflower seeds. Um, we have shelled ones because we're trying to get these guys to be more comfortable with us. Sometimes little Juniper, unless that's Bramble, and I was wrong, that actually might be Juniper. Juniper, hi, is that you? Yes. <laughs> So that's actually Juniper. She got a lot bigger recently. Um, and Bramble is this really sad rat down here who's like, please don't touch me. Um, so Juniper really, really likes sunflower seeds. That's one of her favorite foods. And when she was a little bit smaller than this, we started trying to feed her and see if she wouldn't mind us being near her a little bit. Um, she's actually pretty calm. She doesn't mind if we touch her a little bit, but she doesn't like being picked up. She's not like a domestic rat. They're still wild rats. And then Pollen is sitting in that corner there because she feels really safe. She has two rocks around her, so she feels like she's not gonna be in danger there. So she's hanging out, hoping that no one sees her. Um, so, and I'm sure you guys probably have some questions. So if anyone has questions, feel free to keep typing them there in the comments and I'll have someone read them out to me and then I will answer whatever I can for you. Yeah, Kelsey, I do want to um, give a quick shout out. Um, a lot of you guys have been real appreciative in the comments here, and it's really sweet. Um, again, we really, we really appreciate you guys. Um, Maddie says she's going to miss us. Um, Liam's favorite episodes were Sydney, Rodney, and the Dark Frogs. Ronan's favorite were Kawadi Vulture. Um, 
and dark frogs, which is awesome. Looks like that was a really popular one for you guys. Um, and we really appreciate this. Um, let's see, there was one other one that I wanted. Oh, Amelia, her favorite were the mountain lions. So, so thank you guys for commenting. Um, we really appreciate it. And now we'll get to some questions. Um, all right, um, Megan wanted to know where mom was. So if we wanna point her out again. Yeah, so mom is still in here with them. They're not quite old enough yet to be separated from her. So they are weaned, which means they're not drinking milk anymore. Um, these guys are eating solid food entirely and they're just eating the diet that I put in there for them. You'll see um, Juniper just sitting there munching on some seeds down in the corner. So mom will definitely live with them for a while longer, hopefully for the rest of Juniper's life. Um, but yeah, like I said, Bramble will be the one who's gonna have to leave here because he's the boy. They chew on a lot of wood actually so you'll see in here we do have a lot of hard wood items for them to chew on so these guys actually have teeth that grow for most of their lives um, since they do eat such hard things they grind their teeth down so they keep growing so they'll use wood and you kind of see the little chew marks onto this one trying not to knock everything down um, to grind down their teeth so this right here they chewed the bark off they ate it and then they expose the wood inside. So they will eat some of what they chew off and a lot of it just gets shredded and then we'll clean it up eventually for them. All right. um, RJ wants to know how good their sense of smell is. These guys actually have a pretty good sense of smell. Um, if I were to hide these little tiny sunflower seeds around, these guys could find them later. Um, and sometimes you'll even see if you open a little seed container, they start sniffing because they can already smell what you might be feeding them. So Juniper is probably gonna notice that she has a little seed next to her and then she'll go grab that. Uh, Sophia would like to know if they're endangered. So these guys aren't endangered right now. They are least concerned. Um, there aren't any really current dangers for them since they are pretty good about taking care of themselves and they have a good reproduction rate. But in the future, if we develop too much, they might be impacted. But right now, they're okay. Okay, um, Hadass, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong, and Gabe are wondering how long they live. So in zoos, these guys can live an average of about six years. The oldest one ever recorded in captivity was about nine and a half years old. But in the wild, they only live for a few years. And a lot of that is due to the fact that they do get eaten by a lot of different animals. All right, Paige is wondering how we tell them apart. So it's a little bit hard, as you saw, I did mess up for most of this. Um, before, Bramble was actually a lot bigger than Juniper. So Bramble was about 140 grams and Juniper was only about 100 grams. So she was much smaller than her brother. Um, she's recently started to catch up to him, but if he, I don't think he's gonna come out for us because he doesn't really like being out in the open all the time. Um, but he has more of a buff color, so he's more yellowish along his sides and the side of his face. He also has kind of a broader head. Um, little Juniper is a lot more gray than he is, and she also has more of a pointy, thin face than he does. Um, and then Pollen is much, much larger than the other two, and she has more of a grayer coat to her because she's a little bit older. All right. Um, looks like, just so we know, everybody's favorites. Um, Evelyn's favorite episode was the snowy owl. Oh, and Megan's favorite was a red panda. Awesome. Um, and then Sophia would like to know if they have a favorite food. So they have a few favorite foods. These guys really, really like mealworms. Um, they also really love the sunflower seeds. And then we actually have some little treats that we give them occasionally um, that were made for just your rodents at home. So these are little drops made for a chinchilla, but they're made with dandelion, um, which these guys really, really like. Usually Juniper really loves these, so we'll see if she wants one. She gets full sometimes, and then she doesn't want to eat anymore. But um, she's going to go eat that little dandelion drop there in the corner. That is one of her favorite foods. to take the camera away from Laura, who is often behind the scenes, so that we can say thank wow. you to the entire EPZ staff who have just completed our 60th Zoo School Live. I'm crying already. <laughs> it's been a, a ton of good work and a lot of great opportunities to connect with people. So we wanna say thank you. We're gonna keep connecting. If you have not heard already, we are going to do a special 
uh, Giraffe Zoo School Live on June 21st, and we will keep you updated with all sorts of programming coming up soon. Um, so again, thank you to Laura and the entire EPZ staff. We have a few representatives here um, for making all of these a success. We hope you have a wonderful summer, and please join in and keep an eye on our uh, Facebook page for some other programming coming up. All right, guys, I'm going to turn it back over to Kelsey and Susan wants to say goodbye. And, uh, yeah, it was great getting to teach you guys about the wood rats. If you do have questions later, please keep typing them. And as soon as I have time later on today, I'll go online and I'll answer all of your questions for you. So have a great day, guys. I'm glad you could join us.